Since a while, I have been experimenting with developing a custom C++ server for the Unreal Engine. A custom server means that the server is completely independent of the engine and entirely replaces any built-in engine networking and replication functionality. A custom server might allow replicating large amounts of clients at low hosting costs in the future. Further, a custom server is potentially not bound to any limitations imposed by the engine anymore. Additionally, a custom server that is entirely implemented from scratch could provide reworked, safe and simple to use APIs that are more specialized towards a specific use case while using the Unreal Engine as a renderer. However, engineering such a server takes a lot of effort because the data model, simulations and netcode have to be re-engineered and re-implemented to be independent of the engine itself. Additionally, a custom server requires glue code to connect the engine independent code back to the engine. This is why the approach of a custom server might not always be the best for your use case compared to the built-in replication solution of the engine. On the other hand, a custom server could be beneficial if the networking solution of the engine has limitations towards a specific use case like massively multiplayer online worlds. Last year, I released two presentations for my custom C++ server already to show my progress. After following my presentations, many people have been interested in my custom server and wanted to try it out. In this presentation, I will show you the current version of my server and plugin for the Unreal Engine, which are now available for demonstration purposes and to get feedback. Everything that you will see in this presentation is available for testing through a pre-compiled demo package, for which you will find the download info in the description. I am calling this project Enasync which stands for Engine Network Abstract Synchronizer, because the server and client layer are synchronized independent of the Unreal Engine and could theoretically support other 3D engines such as Unity or Godot. My project consists of two main components, a standalone server and an Unreal Engine client plugin. Further, there is a scriptable headless client that is also independent of the Unreal Engine and could be used for testing later on. The headless client is not part of the demo yet, but might be available in the future. All is made possible by a shared implementation that is used by the server and client. Both are driven by the same logic and simulations. The basic workflow for building a virtual world using my server is quite simple. You create your entities like NPCs or items directly inside Unreal Engine and export them to server assets with a single click. Entities then can be scripted server-side to add custom behavior through C++, TypeScript or JavaScript. You heard right. The server embeds the modern V8 JavaScript engine to make scripting as simple as possible. The V8 JavaScript engine is also used in Node.js or many web browsers like Chrome or Edge. The overall goal of this project is to provide a replication solution that has the potential to scale well for many clients and instances while being simple to use. This can be achieved by using all available CPU cores and an optimized custom replication system. The first step towards a well-scaling server is to support hosting multiple maps from the same server to split computational load, allow instancing and improve map travel times. My server is fully capable already to host multiple maps simultaneously for many clients at the same time. Clients can transition to different Unreal levels already. Further, map travel could happen seamless without any loading screen to different maps that are represented by the same Unreal Engine level. To allow the server to scale well with as many CPU cores as possible, we also have to introduce a new way how to implement scripted behavior to entities so we can offload expensive tasks to as many threads as possible or distribute work across multiple map update packs. For this reason, the server provides a rich scripting API that is entirely asynchronous, making use of modern C++20, CoAwait and JavaScript's await keyword. All world simulations work entirely on a data-driven model placed entirely inside a highly parallelizable entity component system. The public API for scripting is entirely data-driven as well. No pointers, no unstable accesses. Scripting is simple and straightforward in C++ as well as in TypeScript. Further, to reduce memory consumption and decrease load times as much as possible, the server assets are highly compacted when exported out of the engine 
and are afterwards directly memory mapped into the server. The server starts blazingly fast in a fraction of a second. Additionally, the server hot reloads code and assets automatically on change to blend right into the iteration of your workflow. Restarting the server manually is not needed. Previously, we mentioned that our simulation system is entirely data-driven. The client makes use of the same simulations the server is using. Also, the client uses the data-driven model to efficiently render replicated actors through efficient instance static meshes. We call this technique Instance Static Mesh Folding. Instance Static Meshes can then be converted back to an actor when needed. This is all handled by our replication system. The limitations of my current implementation are not obvious on the first look. Currently, the server does not implement any advanced replication system and replication scales quadratically to the client count. Also, the application layer network protocol is not optimized. I prioritize the server to be usable first, rather than to optimize it to follow the simple principle that optimizing something that cannot be used is unnecessary. We are now taking a look at how the plugin can be installed. The plugin can be downloaded as zip archive and you will find the download information in the description below. Then extract the archive with a program of your choice. The archive contains an entire demo project for the Unreal Engine. The important parts of my plugin are placed under Plugins Email Sync. Then open the corresponding Unreal project file. Depending on your machine, the project might take a short time to prepare, compile and start up. If everything went right, you will see the demo level. The server requires the C++ runtime library's official Studio 2019. Usually you have Visual Studio 2019 already installed for Unreal Engine development, so this should not be an issue. Secondly, the server requires OpenSSL runtime libraries, which I do not provide as part of the installation. I have added a link to the description where you can get those. The server executable is located in Plugins Enersync and can be started by simple double-clicking. Additionally, it can be configured by the configuration file placed in Enersync etc. If everything went right, the server and Unreal Engine project are now up and running and available for use. The server requires assets exported from the project to run, but the provided demo level archive already contains all required assets for the demo levels, so an initial asset export is not needed. The server assets are exported and read from build data and build nav data. All of what you see in the demo is built from personal build assets or Unreal Engine starter content, so I can distribute this exact project to you without copyright issues. The demo level assets are not pretty and you can fully replace all assets including models, textures and animations so it will look more visually appealing, for instance with Megascan textures or mixable animations. Now we are starting our first play session. This demo does not work in standalone network mode. Make sure before you press begin play to set the network mode to client. You can connect with as many clients as you like and start your session from the player start placed in the level or from the current camera position in the editor. Additionally, it is possible to begin a play session from every level that is registered as server map, so this plans right into your usual workflow. While the default Unreal Engine networking implementation supports this by default, we had to re-implement all this functionality for our custom networking system that is based on our own UNet driver. If everything goes right, you are now seeing that the server is accepting your connection request and the Unreal Engine enters the server world. This demo contains various areas that need an explanation. I will now go through all the areas and will show you what is relevant. Server entities are defined by primary assets exported directly from the Unreal Engine. You can create, modify or remove all predefined example assets based on your preference. There are three types of assets that you can export to the server. Global assets, which are not related to a specific map, such as the templates for NPCs, spells, auras and skills. You can export those with the first blue button. Then there are assets that are directly related to a specific level, like static actor spawns, automatic spawn tables or the bounds of areas. You can export those by pressing the green button. Also there is the navigation mesh, which represents the map geometry of a specific level. You can export it with the third blue purple button. All assets are hot reloadable into the server and are available when you reconnect the next time, 
so there is no need to restart the server application if you made a change to one of your exported assets. NPCs and other dynamically spawned objects are the fundamental base for every virtual world. Actors can be freely placed statically inside the world and are spawned accordingly. Additionally, any NPC can be spawned dynamically from a script. Further, it is possible to adjust some properties of an NPC per spawn entry, which automatically overrides the predefined values of its archetype. You can simply enable network replication for any of your actor blueprints by adding an ENA object component or ENA unit component and then setting B netload on client to false. The plugin already exports various base classes where this is already handled for you. For instance, there's AENA character, AENA object actor, AENA static mesh actor, and AENA randomized static mesh actor. Make sure to also store any newly created NPC asset in a directory registered as a primary asset search path for the primary asset type NPC. For instance, content NPC. You can simply add more search paths under project settings, asset manager. There are various other primary asset types used and exported by the plugin, like item, spell, aura, or skill. When exporting the asset to the server, the exporter will set an ID to the asset, which is an unsigned integer, which can be used to address the asset server side, for instance, for spawning. Items are another fundamental part of every virtual world. They usually are directly tied to progression and add attributes and capabilities to characters. Further, wearable items also shape any NPC and character visually. The server already has built in many item-related systems that support many capabilities already you would expect. For instance, there is an inventory system, equipment with multiple equipment slots, attributes on attribute effect scaling, item categories, loot, and randomized loot tables for NPCs. Items can be created by creating a new blueprint which inherits the UENA item class. Additionally, the asset needs to be placed in one of the directories registered as a search path for the primary asset type item, like content item. Items can also declare an ENA item visual appearance, which is displayed on the character model through efficient skeletal mesh merging. Spells represent the abilities in our server, while auras are permanent temporary status effects. Further spells and auras can be learned and modified by a progressible skill system. Spells, auras and skills can be created with the same workflow as an item. The Inasync plugin provides the UENA spell, UENA aura and UENA skill class which can be inherited and extended by a blueprint. The properties and behavior of spells and auras can be declared with various predefined effects. In the future, it is planned that developers will also be capable of adding new custom effect types and scripting their behavior. Additionally, the plugin provides a target query system that can test and validate spell usage on targets based on various conditions which get validated first on the client and then on the server to prevent cheating. Our ability system will most likely change in the future to be more flexible, so we will not cover it in detail in this presentation. Although our server is pre-compiled, it can be adapted by C++, TypeScript or JavaScript based scripts to add new custom behavior to NPCs and levels. Our C++ extension system provides a fast and type safe way to add custom behavior to our server. Currently, there are two types of C++ extensions, but more types might be added in the future. Behavior scripts can be used to add custom asynchronous behavior to any scene object or NPC. Additionally, our server supports C++ runtime reloading. It automatically detects changes on extensions that are loaded. NPCs are instantly reloaded while other types of scripts might be updated on the next creation of the map, which is usually the case after reconnecting. The project ships with CMake files that can be used to generate a project solution for you, so you can build your own extensions and add additional ones. Extensions are loaded from bin extensions and build extensions. The source code for the example extensions is located in the extensions directory. For the next steps, you need CMake to be available on your system and added to your path environment variable. To generate a project solution, simply execute the init.cmake.bat patch file. The project solution is then generated into the build directory. Then open the extensions.sln 
that you will find inside the build directory. After opening the solution, make sure you select Release with debug info as the active configuration. Do not build extensions in debug configuration since the build type is not binary compatible with the provided server libraries and will cause crashes. Building the solution is enough to load the code into the running server. Most of our scripts are provided as source code. Feel free to use them as a base for other scripts or adapt them to your need. The first demo level contains an area where NPCs are spawned that already have various C++ placeholder scripts attached. They are perfectly suited for early testing. To assign a C++ behavior script to any object, set the script name of the spawn or actor to the name of the C++ behavior class with that .cpp extension. NPC behavior can also be scripted using TypeScript or JavaScript. The server fully embeds a modern V8 JavaScript engine with support for reloadable ES modules and cancelable awaitable promises. In many aspects, the server can be compared to Node.js for virtual worlds already. Additionally, because every map instance can potentially be updated in parallel, map-independent JavaScript scripts are also processed in parallel. Heavyweight calls to the API like navigation mesh or collision queries are offloaded to a parallelizable thread pool automatically by design. We also provide automatically generated TypeScript API definitions so your behavior scripts are also as type safe as possible. Also, the server can use installed JavaScript packages from the NPM ecosystem. The JavaScript VM is available for use already. In this presentation, I will only show you the basic usage. For the next steps, you will require Node.js with NPM installed on the system and available from your path environment variable. To initialize the JavaScript scripts and transpile them from their TypeScript source, simply execute the init minus js.bat batch script. This will run an npm build and places the output into build scripts. The TypeScript source files are located in scripts. Then you can open the scripts directory with an editor of your choice, for instance VS Code. After changing a script you can run init minus js.bat again or use the convenient ts minus minus watch option to let TypeScript transpile your code automatically after you have changed it. The example scripts and API are self-explaining. Feel free to try it out. The server also watches installed JavaScript scripts for changes and reloads entities automatically whenever possible by respawning them. Additionally, every pending asynchronous action linked to an outdated script is cleaned up from the server automatically. This presentation was showing you the basics of my custom server project. I want to repeat that the project is in a very experimental state and not meant for any productive projects. If you want to try it out, I added you a link in the description where you can download the demo form. Feel free to drop any comments or feedback in the comment section down below on my Discord server.